Hey everyone, thank you for joining us once again as we continue with our Justice for Aaron Brady campaign. Uh, we've just taken a slight break from uh, scrutinising the podcast Making a Detective, created by Ian Doyle in association with Irish Sun and uh, Stephen Breen, editor of The Sun. So I would ask you again, please go and listen to the podcasts, particularly uh, podcast 9, 10, 11 and 12, the podcasts in relation to Pat Murray, Senior Investigating uh, Officer, and his investigation into the more than robbery at Lordship Credit Union. Um, so firstly today, I just want to, uh, on behalf of our family and behalf of Aaron, I'd like to thank you everyone for the support. It's been absolutely phenomenal and we want to continue to build on that. Um, thank everyone for uh, their interactions with the, um, the campaign and all the videos. And once again this evening we're actually going to answer another uh, question from one of the campaign followers. Um, as we have said on numerous occasions, I think most people are aware, uh, there has been some interference with um, Aaron's campaign uh, social media pages and we have made a conscious effort to move everything over onto YouTube. And I'll put the link underneath this video here again and it'll go out on YouTube. Uh, please click over onto the YouTube channel and please click the sub subscribe button. The numbers are going up very nicely. We're more than happy and we'd be delighted if more people would go over. Just click on the su subscribe button. It helps with our algorithms. So um, once again, thank you all for that. And now we're going to go and have a look at a question from uh, Sergeant, 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 Oh, here we have it here, Sergeant, well, it's not Sergeant, sorry, it's um, Big Stones. And Big Stones question, there's actually four questions in this. Uh, did you know your son was, uh, it was your son in the paper? Did you speak to your son about this picture in the paper? Why did you wait until he was arrested to start your campaign? And maybe you could put another video up and explain that. Excellent question, Mr. Big Stones. Very, very good, as with all your interactions. Um, so what I'm going to do is we'll take one part of the question at a time and we'll just put the first one up there. Did you know it was your son in the paper? Most certainly we knew. Uh, I'll put it up here, the Sun the World. You can see it there clearly. And as I have explained before, I actually have it here on A3. That picture was printed on the Sun the World social media site without the pixelations. So we were more than aware that it was Aaron and some of his friends that, were, that was in the newspaper. That goes without saying, and we've covered that before. So I'll just pop up your second question here. Did you speak to your son about his picture in the paper? Uh, most certainly did. Obviously, this was one of the worst times of our lives when this actually happened. And Aaron's picture went up into the newspapers, and like everything else, like all gossip, uh, good news travels fast, Bad news travels an awful lot quicker, Mr. Big Stones. I can assure you of that, and our family will testify to that without a shadow of a, without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, we were very much aware it was Aaron, obviously, because as I said, uh, the pictures went in on pixelated. And I spoke to Aaron certainly about it. And from the outset, when we spoke about it, when it broke on the it was a Saturday night. Aaron was actually at a disco in Dublin in the right venue in Swords on the night, night that picture broke. And uh, obviously if you're after shooting a member of a Garda Shia Corner, you'd be going to discos in the Republic of Ireland when you actually lived in the, in the north. But we leave that aside. And uh, so we did discuss it. And I knew from the outset that Aaron had nothing to do with the more than robbery at Lordship Credit Union. And we've said from the beginning, Aaron was absolutely no saint. And we understood, we were after going through the trial where he had racked a number of cars and rammed a Garda van in and out. We were fully aware of, of, of that. But in relation to actually taking a gun and murdering something, someone, that would not be possible. And it didn't happen. So I did, we did, most certainly did speak about it. And Aaron did go through a very traumatic time at that time, as did we all. Because everyone, you think everyone's looking at you and everyone's speaking about you. So um, that goes without saying, we definitely did speak about it. And your third question I'll take up now, uh, why did you wait till he was arrested to start your campaign? Uh, it's an excellent question 
and funny, uh, that question finds a serious fault with us as a family. Um, when you ask, why did we wait until the start, till he was arrested to start his campaign? We actually didn't. It was after his trial we started the campaign. We should have started the campaign when Aaron was arrested. We never dreamt that this case was going anywhere. And for a whole lot of uh, reasons, and predominantly because of this newspaper article here, and the people that were named as suspects along with Aaron. So if we look at this here, that's Aaron there. Yeah, so that's Aaron. So obviously we knew that. You can see that quite clearly, um, particularly when it's on screen. You can see that that's clearly Aaron. This person here is suspect A. This is, Aaron, this is Aaron's best friend at the time, suspect A. Now, we had to believe that suspect A uh, had old clothes on him and crawled through fields uh, with a gun to rob a credit union. Couldn't be any further from the truth. Suspect, suspect A is OCD with cleanliness. He wouldn't let his shoes get dirty going from the car to his house if it was raining. It's as simple as that. That young man came home from America and as far as, I, I, I did mean to check this before I got the video done, but he was after paying a tax bill, his annual tax bill from his companies in America of over $170,000. And we were led to believe that this young man was running around fields with guns to uh, in some way gather up possibly five, seven, ten thousand dollars or ten thousand pounds each a euro at the time. Simply never happened. And uh, as for the other pictures, obviously we knew Aaron didn't do it and we knew for sure suspect A didn't do it. Was not involved in the modern robbery. Obviously this is back in 2013, Mr. Big Stones. They had no fifth radar. And you see in 2022, they still don't have a fifth radar. And it was the question brought to light these other two pictures here. And what I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to pop up another article that I thought I had actually lost. And this is, um, you can see there on the screen, Nicola Talent was in Cross Midlen and this um, headline, we won't hide cop killers. So I'm just gonna bring up the other part of that there, that's coming across. Face off in bandit country. So obviously Nicola Talent and um, Donald McIntyre was down across. And the young man you see pixelated here, uh, Nicola Talent and uh, Mr. McIntyre said clearly that this man was one of the raiders and they spoke to him on the side of the road, took his picture, and that's him pixelated there. Well, I knew very shortly, that was on the 23rd of February 2013, and I knew before that, that that young man, again, something similar to Aaron, names have been bandied about, and I knew that that young man was in two businesses at the time of the more than robbery, and there was CCTV footage and actually credit card payments to confirm that that young man was elsewhere. Oh, that's another member of the gang gone. Okay. And then, very, very importantly here. This is the 23rd of February 2013. And you can see what I've circled there. And I've brought up the text. The second man was his brother. Another of the chief suspects. He's disappeared too. Now, unfortunately, I don't have another, enough room to put an X through him. because it, it, But he wasn't there either and there's been no further investigation, he, that young man was elsewhere also. But more importantly, you can see there, however, uh, uh, there was no, uh, however, there was no sign of their sister, the girl that officers believe drove the getaway car. Again, vitally important, this is the 23rd of February 2013. We have Pat Murray, speaking in his recent podcast, well, the podcast from earlier this year, and he was very upset that the intelligence from the incident room was, be, was being leaked to these ragtop newspapers. And I knew at that time, as far back as 2013, that that young girl, allegedly the driver of the getaway car, and it proves 
that on Garda Shia Kono were looking for a female driver, that young girl was in a hairdresser's in Dundalk. She's not a member of the gang. And that has been proven since I have CCTV footage stills of that young girl in the main street in Dundalk at 9.31, at the exact time Detective Garda Adrian Donoghue lost his life. So there's your gang. And the reason why we didn't wait until Aaron was arrested, we never dreamt. We knew in 2013 that this was a load of absolute nonsense. And to be honest, we believed in some way that it was some sort of a ruse to try and bring out the real culprits. Now, we have said many times, Mr. Big Stones, that there is no gang connected to Aaron Brady. And there's it there for you. There is no gang. They actually mentioned suspect is brother on court. He's no longer a suspect because we found CCTV footage of him also and clear testimony given in court that he was in his own home at the time of the Northern robbery. And then they tried to in insinuate that an older man, an older member of the f uh, suspect A's family was some way involved in the logistics of the gang. When at that time in 2013, um, the older gentleman wasn't even speaking to suspect A or his brother. And there was no co phone contact between the man head of logistics and any of these people here. And if you listen to the words of Pat Murray in his recent podcast, these are all the same people, Aaron Brady's gang. Well, there's a day for you. I can't put it any simpler than that. And that is why, as you asked in your question, why did you wait till he was arrested to start your campaign? So I'll answer that again. We never dreamt it was going to go that far, even when Aaron was arrested and taken back from America. Then we knew that they were dealing with criminals like Daniel Cahill. Uh, it, became, it became apparent to us that uh, criminals were given statements against Aaron. A criminal from Dublin, a criminal from uh, Mike, uh, a man that was caught with uh, guns, ammunition and drugs. And as I have said before, sources have told us that the guards referred to these people to give statements against Aaron as scumbags. And I can't say our opinion would have been that distance from that. We never dreamt it would even go to court. Then we had the situation where Molly Staunton was uh, given evidence and we had a man in the room in our kitchen in America telling her, tell them what you're fucking supposed to tell them. We never dreamt the ca case would last another day. The case is a shambles. And I thank you sincerely for your question. They're always very insightful and it gives us an opportunity once again, Mr. Big Stones, to go through not fine detail, but facts. Facts and detail that shows that Aaron Brady cannot be the man that shot and more than Detective Adrian Donahue. And anyone that is concerned for all the families that are involved in this case would want to see, and indeed uh, maybe no one as much as ourselves, the Brady family, want to see the people who shot and murdered Detective Garda Adrian Donahue brought to justice. So once again, thank you so much for your question. I'm sorry for the delay in uh, getting back to you. I think you sent that question in a couple of weeks ago, but I've had to endure listening to Pat Murray's podcast along with uh, Breen and Dial for over two or three weeks now. And it, it is actually quite harrowing to have to listen to it. So I apologise for the delay in getting back to me, uh, getting back to you, Mr. Stones. Any other questions, please send them in to us and we'll deal with them as best we can. And to all uh, the campaign followers, please like, comment and share, as I said at the beginning of the, the uh, video. And anyone has any questions, uh, please let us know. And I'll ask once again, if you have time, listen to the podcasts. If there's any information Pat Murray, Stephen Breen or Ian Dial uh, are giving out in the podcast and you want to question question in relation to Aaron and the case, please let us know. Once again, thank you for joining us and we're back again next week and we'll have at least two or three videos on podcast number number 11, I think it is. 
yeah, podcast number 11 called On The Covers. So uh, we'll get back to you with those videos uh, early next week. Thank you.